Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be working on the battleship USS Texas. And this is a plastic kit made by Trumpeter. And it's in a scale of 1, 350. So this kit comes a standard with four sheets of photo etched parts. And in total, the kit contains over 800 parts. So far, I'm actually only around about half an hour into the build. It started off uh, really fast and I had no troubles whatsoever. In fact, the only uh, trouble I had on the hull was fitting this little section here. That was easily remedied by just using a little point mill, one mill drill, just drilling out the hole. So I'm starting to work on the, uh, the main section of the bridge. And I found this process to be uh, quite relaxing after obviously spending the last year building HMS Victory and obviously the Battleship Yamato. I found this process to be uh, quite therapeutic.
Okay, so I'm starting to cut out some of the fog twitch parts. There is actually a cutting hole in that black piece of cardboard. I found the uh, process of adding the uh, photo wedge right at the start a little bit tricky. And it turned out why just doing some research and I was using the kind of like uh, the wrong kind of super glue. And a bit later on I changed over and started using some uh, Flexi 5K CA fine super glue. And I found that gave me a lot more maneuverable, gave me a lot more time, working time, before the voltage part stuck. So I have a lot more time to, you know, like get it into the final position. I tried to show as much of the process of adding the photo wedge as I could, but sometimes it was just a little bit impractical. And every time I kind of played the uh, the footage back or the editing. I kind of got my hand in the way or a finger in the way or something in the way so I pretty much could only kind of show you the sections where I was never blocking the uh, the camera. Okay, so we're going to the section where I kind of believe that I made my uh, first major mistake and it wasn't really a mistake it's just it's a case of obviously that you you learn as you're building these kind of things and if I was doing this again or if I'm doing obviously a plastic model ship in the future I wouldn't have added that antenna until right at the very last part that I ever fitted because even though it's obviously it was glued nice in place it's so fragile and it didn't matter what I did, as soon as I glued it to the uh, the main part of the bridge, I just knocked it so many times from my hand when I was adding more parts later on in the build. Yeah, so if I was doing it again, I would have completely avoided adding this part. So moving on to this section of the smokestack, and because I uh, spend a lot of my time obviously building wooden battleships, I tend to have a lot of dowels knocking around. So it worked out I had the uh, perfectly shaped dowel to fit that fog to which part. Just rounded off the edge and then just fitted it to the top. So in this section I need to uh, form a complete circle. So I'm just using one of my dowels again. But this dowel was 8mm so I had to just wrap a little bit of masking tape around it until I brought it up to the 8.5mm size I needed. And now I'm applying it to the uh, superstructure part. And I tend to find that it's a lot easier to kind of glue it a bit over time. So I'm gluing in one section, let that dry. Applying a little bit more glue and then holding that section in place. And I find it's just a lot easier to work with rather than trying to glue it all in one, one go.
finally we get to the stage where we kind of got to add all the uh, the main superstructure part now just just build glue it down to the hull it's kind of a nice moment where you kind of join the just parts together the first time and you can see it really starting to take its final shape. So now it's time to start the process of priming the uh, USS Texas and I'm using my Bart Sharp 186 airbrush with a 0.8mm nozzle and I'm just using a Mr Surfacer 1500 primer with a Mr Surfacer levelling compound for the priming course. All I'm really trying to do is just hit it from every angle coming from left to right, up to down, from the top and then from the sides just till I get a complete coverage. Okay so while that process of the primer was tried I thought I'd make up a couple of Texas's main guns and it's quite good to kind of leave yourself a little bit of construction left over so while some of the paint's dry you can keep yourself busy. So I got an opportunity to work with some more photo etch and in this kit there was hundreds of photo etch pieces but one of the hardest ones to actually construct was this uh, main catapult. It was made up around about three or four different components that all had to be joined and glued together so I think in that little section you're looking at now I think they must have been around about 20 to 30 little bends and then it all had to be super glued together. And while I still had the, uh, the airbrush loaded with the primer, I thought I would completely cover all the five main guns. So now it's time to add the, uh, the next colour. And I just went this time, I just thought I'd give uh, the Vallejo colour ranges a try. I've used Vallejo paints before, but it's the first time I'd used them on the uh, plastic battleship. So I actually found them to be uh, work really well to use the Vallejo colours with a flow improver and I had the compressor set at a 15 psi and I use that psi pretty much on the entire construction and the painting process of the uh, USS Texas so I'm just adding the waterline first well the top section of the waterline just so I could keep that paint layer separated why I started to add a little bit of pre-shading to the bottom section of the hull and the pre-shading was just so when you put over your top coat which is normally an anti-fouling red just on some of the seam lines and some of the uh, impression marks just kind of show through the uh, anti-fouling red it just adds a little bit of shading a little bit of darkness just come through So now I'm just taping off a 5mm waterline in black and by putting over that second layer of uh, masking tape it will give me a, a 5mm black waterline and then now I can start to paint all the hull and I was using the Tamiya XF9 
So this is one of my uh, favourite parts, is when you get to peel back the masking tape and hopefully it doesn't pull off your paint as well. But it's always nice when you get a nice crisp waterline. So I was still working on the whole section. I thought it would be easier just to paint the uh, propeller on a nice bronze colour. So I attach the rudder. So now it's time to start working on some post shading. And this is just to kind of dull down some of the really, really strong second coat. And this is just to create some like shadows, some impression lines. Sometimes it's very difficult to actually see it when the model's complete. But it does uh, it does make a real difference when you add some shading and I'm also now doing some fine brushing in just to just catch the high spots unlike the smokestack where there's raised paneling just a little bit of the uh, the shading will just kind of catch it and then it'll start to just just highlight the lighter spots and it just makes a real difference okay so I'm kind of painting my text is a little bit different I'm, when I kind of do my painting I like to uh, think of it more of a piece of art than a model. And I saw a nice picture of Texas where it had been catched from the uh, the port side by the sun. So all the port side was really highlighted and a lot lighter. So this is what the effect that I'm trying to go from in my model today. And all I'm doing now is just priming all the railings. I find it a lot easier to prime them while they're still left on the sprue. And like I say now, it's just uh, painting the little catapult plane. And this, I don't like say, I don't normally paint anything this small. I and mean, there's very, very little detail on these planes. So it's just, uh, just try and pick out what you can and just try and make it look as best as possible. But then when I added a little bit of a darker wash a bit later on, it did uh, make it stand out a little bit better.
So I'm getting very close to the uh, adding all the uh, the railings that went around the port and starboard side of USS Texas. I didn't show too much of this uh, process because every time I uh, was editing the footage, all you could see was just kind of my hands in the uh, in the shot covering what I was trying to show you. So I could pretty much only just show you this section because that's all I could film. So I've started the process of making the uh, decal flag and I've just added it to a little bit of silver foil and I find that when you do that and then cut it out you get a lot more obviously realism with a flag you can twist it and turn it to make it look a little bit more authentic than just having a decal flag. So I originally released this video nearly uh, two years ago now but this section of the painting was a, around about an 18 minute video and I never actually over voiced it. So a lot of the comments I got was saying that I'd put this uh, flag in the, uh, the wrong place and see on reflection, yeah, I can clearly see I have. But at the time it was uh, the first plastic battleship I'd built in years and I was very naively just followed the instructions for the, the placement of the flag. So this model's getting very close to me complete now so all I'm doing now is just really highlighting the uh, the sign with a little bit of bronze to really make the BB35 Texas really stand out. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I know this is uh, a lot of people might have seen this because like I say, it was over two videos before this and around about 70,000 views. But I was never happy with the uh, the part two because I never over voiced it. So I never really got to tell people exactly my process with the painting. And I'm a lot more happier with this uh, video. So I'd just like to say thank you all for watching. And I'd just like to let you know that I'm actually working on another USS Battleship and working on the USS Hawaii and that video will be out later in the summer. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you all again soon.